So yeah, welcome everyone. Um, today we will be talking about uh, different patterns um, that simplify creating objects or make it cleaner um, um, code that is separating your concerns in your applications. And um, it's actually more than just factory. The factory is like a multi pattern term. Uh, we're also talking about builders, which is pretty similar. And if you're wondering uh, and looked at the agenda and said Martin Kemp will be giving this talk, um, Martin is unfortunately sick, so uh, I will uh, take take this over. Um, but we both work at consulting work. Uh, he is uh, doing more architecture in uh, projects. I'm more on the delivery management side of things. And I usually uh, don't do that much ABL development compared to my colleagues. So I'm more a .NET Java guy <laughs> who happens to work in a uh, very intense open edge uh, focused company. <laughs> so um, I do uh, a lot of ABL nowadays too. But I don't have that experience like most of you have. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm the newbie, you, you're the experts <laughs> from my point of view. Uh, but, but anyway, I have over 20 years of experience in uh, software development in, in various um, tools and uh, technology stacks, um, mostly full stack development for web-based applications, so not that desktop uh, focused, um, like many of the business applications uh, that you might be doing are. Um, and yeah, I'm coming from the e-procurement e world, so companies uh, dealing with other companies, um, basically um, electronic marketplaces, and I was mostly building search engines my <laughs> my whole professional life, let's say. Um, just a question, who was in the yesterday's talk about the decorator pattern? Uh, so like half of the group, okay. Then I will recap a little bit also what we did yesterday because I will be re using that code uh, for the other patterns. So it's like Lego bricks, you can stick things together to create something bigger. Um, we will do that, let's say. But for that, maybe it's fair for the others to also know the bricks that we built yesterday. Um, yeah, I work for consulting work. Um, many of you know my brother, who is the uh, founder of Consulting Work, so Mike Feschner, that's my oldest brother. There's a third one in the middle, so <laughs> it's a little bit like Diablo, they also have to treat Lords of the Hell. That's <laughs> when we three approach together, that's dangerous. Um, yeah. Uh, Anyway, so consulting work, um, we, are, we are more or less uh, laser focused on open edge and uh, everything which surrounds that. So development tools um, like, I don't know, Sona and stuff like that, we, we can uh, help, help there too. Uh, and all the, or main, all, all is an acceleration, but many of the tools progress acquired over the, the decades. Um, we, um, do consulting services for them too. So for instance, WhatsApp Gold, the monitoring solution that they acquired from Ipswich two years ago, I think. Um, we can also do things like that. So not just pure software development consulting, also maybe infrastructure around it, development uh, procedures, DevOps things, um, build pipelines, automated testings, uh, and stuff like that. We have people that focus on that. Next to classical software architecture, consulting, modernization services, and um, especially um, implementing things using the Smart Component Library. There, this is a dedicated session about that. Well, I think that was before that here, uh, in that room, actually. Um, yeah, as said, it's not just open edge and development uh, tools that, that we uh, deal with, um, so Telerik things, um, no matter if it's uh, on open edge side or also on Angular side, um, ultra controls or infragistic controls, how to use them, how to yeah, best uh, leverage what they 
provide. Um, not going over everything there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are a partner of White Star Software, so um, we help um, uh, implementing also ProTop installations for customers in Europe because they are in the Americas, so they have a time time zone uh, penalty, let's say sometimes. Uh, so if, if ProTop or White Star has uh, new customers in the, in the European time zones, we uh, sometimes help at least creating the um, ProTop instances. And uh, yeah, from there on, it is usually in the control of the customer with help from us and White Star. Yeah. Some other technologies that we deal with, especially for the DevOps stuff, so dockering, uh, dockerizing open edge installations, um, like PASOEs or databases. Um, we, we help with that for some customers. Okay, then for those that, that yesterday uh, weren't in the session, um, let me show some, some code. Um, Uh, we will go to code later. So yesterday, like today, we are talking about software design patterns. Um, that is uh, yeah, well-known ways of doing, so best practices, how to build uh, or design software um, for common problems that, that reoccur in, in uh, software development. So that takes a lot of thinking from developers because there are, let's say, patterns that you can orientate and implement into your own application code um, that help you produce cleaner code, easier to maintain code. And um, yeah, most of them uh, try to separate concerns. Let's say the simple example is don't do database queries in your UI code. So get that out of them and anything in, in between as well. So um, those patterns usually create things in the middle between that. So maybe you have a data access, you have some API that uses or implements such patterns, and then you have your front end. So that way you, you have nice layers that you can um, keep under control so they don't grow too wild. So not too large code bases, not too large classes. Um, and not with too many dependencies to each other. So best case, you have a middle layer, which in a modern arch architecture for OpenMatch would be maybe a PASOE based thing. And the front end, that might be desktop application, that might be web front end based on whatever technology. And for that, you have to have a strict separation between those things. Because if you're thinking about, I want to, let's say, webify my application, or I have a classical desktop application, but I need parts in, in the web, if I would have had too much business logic database access uh, in, in the GUI, which quick and dirty code usually has, um, that, that just increases the effort to basically backport that from the GUI, put that into layers that are, let's say, pulled out of the GUI so that you can build upon that for both uh, front ends, for instance. That's, that's what those patterns usually um, Aim, aim at. So there, there are a lot of them, <laughs> like, like a few dozen that are well known. Um, some of them are uh, purely object-oriented patterns, so you can't apply them to procedural code. There are no classes in procedures. I mean, you can mix and match that nowadays, so you can call classes from procedural code, but the patterns, you can't apply them. There's no inheritance in a procedure, let's say. And um, the patterns we, we look today, they, they are coming from a group of people called Gang of Four. That is uh, one of the, the, let's say, people that were very influential to object orientation itself. So people from the Gang of Four created, for instance, the UML definitions. So each time you draw a class diagram, you're basically working 
with tools they created. Many of them worked for IBM or Rational. Rational is a very old company with, um, developing <laughs> uh, with developer tools, who was acquired then by IBM. But um, some of them are still active in the business. So one of them is the creator of both Eclipse and Visual Studio Code. So no matter uh, <laughs> which IDE you use for OpenMatch nowadays, um, you are using something where those people were involved. So that, that is not some crazy university people. No, that's real people who built real development tools for real developers um, who, who created those things. Um, the rest we already had. <laughs> so, and um, yesterday we looked at one of those patterns, um, which is called the decorator pattern, which allows to add functionality to a class without actually inheriting from from it. So you can at runtime change the behavior uh, by, uh, let's say, uh, covering what you have at runtime with an uh, other class which is then called the decorator. Um, I can do a quick, quick way of doing that. So yesterday we, we had a class called basic house, just a very basic, basic class, which implements an interface and therefore has to implement this method here um, because that's defined in the interface. And it was just returning an integer. And um, the decorators, let's take, one by accident, uh, let's say insulated house. So that's more than basic house, it's insulated house. Um, implements the same interface and has a constructor which takes, let's say, another house, keeps a reference to that. And um, the method you want to, let's say, change the behavior from, you, you decorate that that's called actually decoration. Um, you change the behavior there. So, and if you look at how you use that, then you have your your basic house. Um, and if you want to decorate that, you you take the decorator class, give it the reference to the basic house, and then you have your decorated class. If you call them the same method, the, the output was then the change behavior. So that is what we talked about yesterday. It was a very quick talk, so it's just one pattern, and um, I was way too fast in my presentation. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyhow, for those yesterday um, missing, um, just so that you know. I said those patterns, many of them are coming from those gang and gang of four guys. Um, and there are dozens of, of them. So let's continue. Basically, the same thing that we wanted to do yes yesterday, or we did yesterday, is uh, we want to create houses, something that represents a physical house. With, uh, let's say, houses can be, can be different. So some have insulation, some have solar insulation, some have a heat pump, um, others do not. And the house that you want to have at runtime, that, that might have different of those capabilities. So some have maybe solar and heat pump, others are insulated only, others have nothing of that. And um, that can even change over the lifetime of a house. So houses are not scrapped if there needs to be something modernized, so maybe you add solar later. And the same is, is valid for any object in the lifetime of the object in an application. So it might be that the behavior of the object changes depending on what the user does in the application. So the question is, how do you tell the object how it should behave or, or what kind of object it is at the end? Um, you somehow need to pass values to the object to tell, tell it this is your, let's say, guidance for your or set of rules for, for how you should behave, what's, what's happening if you ask it for something. Um, 
some might be optional, some might be mandatory when you create your object. So there might be constructors. Hello. So there, there might be constructors with different sets of parameters. So if you work in an IDE and sometimes uh, start uh, writing object equals new class and then open the, the left bracket, uh, you see variants of um, constructors presented to you depending on what you actually want to do at that moment in time. And um, that's already the, the stupid part in, in many cases. At that point in time, you have to decide basically what constructor will give you the instance of the object back. An alternative sometimes is you have just a stupid constructor, or simple, basic, uh, default constructor, that's the right term, uh, with, with no parameters. And then you set properties afterwards. Well, that's not unrealistic in application. You create something which represents whatever. In our cases, it will be houses. And um, over the lifetime of the object, you set things, you reset things, you call methods from it that might change internals of the, of the object. For developers, that might be sometimes hard to know or hard to read which way is the right way, which constructor do I know now, do I need all the parameters, can I set some to the question mark or are they all needed <laughs> and, and things like that. Um, and documentation usually is uh, as, as good as, as this. <laughs> <laughs> and the people who did it are not in the company anymore and, and that doesn't make life uh, easier for the developers. So there is a bad example. Um, <laughs> maybe a little bit too many parameters. Uh, no one knows what they want to tell me. And the, the truth is... Um, if you see that, I can guarantee you over the years, software APIs um, exist. Class with ugly constructor, there it is. Um, there will be not only this, but there will be also like that. <laughs> and not, not making it better. Or um, that will get worse, no, more, no worries. So we, we end up now with, with four different constructors, each of them with many, many parameters. In that case, because it's ultra hypothetical, they don't even have a name that tell you what it might be. <laughs> they are just called parameter one, two, whatever. Um, and it's practically hard to tell, especially for people taking up the work. What is the right one to call in the situation you need that object coming from that constructor? That is that's basically an, that's an anti-pattern. So the opposite of uh, best practice pattern is anti-pattern. Um, that's called telescopic constructors. So that they are <laughs> <laughs> in, if you open it in IntelliSense, you will see um, it going uh, longer or shorter depending on what what you're doing. Yeah. And it's, it's not really comprehensive. Um, if you're lucky, they are named good, or you know what you're doing there. Um, but, but worst case, you don't really know which one do you need, which one are what. Uh, the danger of switching parameters is also there. So alternatives to, to, to think like that, um, um, actually I didn't make that slide and I'm very surprised about the order of things on that slide. So there's factory, abstract factory and builder, that is three related things, but there is basically no abstract factory without the factory itself. The abstract factory is, 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 let's say, doing a level more of abstraction to the developer 
on, on what he is actually doing. So the factory itself, that is something you can ask for, give me an object with a specific configuration. The abstract factory is basically you ask something, something abstract, give me or ask someone else to give me. So <laughs> you, you don't even know who is giving you the real object at the end. And you don't have to deal, I mean, that's already in the factory method, but you don't have to deal with um, instantiation of the class itself. So no matter which of those patterns you, you see in software development, you will never see that in combination with a new sign again. No? There is no constructor involved anymore on your side of the, of the things if you are the calling code, the client, basically. And the, the builder, um, the builder is, uh, yeah, separate the construction of a complex object from its representation, allowing the same construction process to create various representations. That's a very stupid sentence for actually describing what it does. The builders separate the act of creating an object into multiple steps. So you create a builder, and the builder you say, at property A, at property B, at property C, at property whatever, and then at the end you say, build. And then it will return the object that you ask for. That's what a builder does. Factories kind of do the same. Um, they just hide better what, what you are asking for. So if you look at an abstract factory here, that has multiple things in it. So um, one, one thing is it, it has a factory method in it, which will uh, at the end return what you want. You want a house. And um, the builder or builders, that's the, the abstract part in, in it actually, is um, the factory decides which builder or which other factory, that can be mix and match more or less, will return you the house that you will, will be getting. And um, yeah, that's abstract says abstract, so you can't instantiate it. Everything needs to be more or less um, Static, so there's static in the in the builder. So all of those things have have in common that you don't really know uh, the specific type that is created. So you're always asking for for something that implements an interface. In this case, it's asking for i house, but not for insulated house or for heat pump house, or a combination of that, actually, uh, which we can do with the decoration that we used yesterday. Um, the cool thing is, compared to the fancy constructor that we saw today, is um, the, the naming might be more meaningful, so it's easier to understand what you, you're, what you will be doing. Um, constructors only, I mean, they always have the name of the class. If the na class name already is stupid, then uh, your constructor will be uh, just as stupid as well. In the abstract factory, you can um, basically, when you, when you continue developing your application fr um, framework, add another implementation that returns you something else without having to do that later on in the client codes, because the factory is the one who decides who creates it and what is created, not the client anymore. The client can influence that by giving parameters into the factory, but the, the let's say, single truth is the factory itself. That's like, like, like a black box for the client, the application client. You don't know who will be creating and what will be created. We can see that in real life, maybe. So uh, abstract factory usage, so let's switch back to, to code. And factory demo, that sounds, sounds good. Um, so as I said, we will be using what we used yesterday. So again, we want to create instances of houses. 
And um, we are here asking, actually it's a factory, it's called builder here, the class name, but that's kind of misleading. Um, to build a house, I mean, it's, it's actually even nice to read. House builder, build a house. That's what it, what it <laughs> says there. And if you want the factory to build a different house, we, we give something to it, parameters. In this case, it's, it's a character that we're giving. So house builder, build modern house. And um, if we go to the, where is the house builder? There's the house builder. If we go to the house builder, you will see, depending on uh, the parameter we give to the build method, it will decide I use a modern house builder or I use a default house builder. And those guys, that's the actual builders. In the simplest case, they just create an instance of um, basic house, which we had earlier today. Or the house builder decides if you say modern house um, to call the modern house, house builder and that will uh, by the magic of uh, the decoration that we did, create um, a house with all the fancy features. So if you run that, no, where is the factory demo? There it is. Um, so we're first asking for just a house, or and then asking for a modern house, and then asking what is the the energy consumption. And we're instantiating a class with ugly constructor here, <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> and then doing nothing with it, so that's not even better. Okay, that's uh, stupid to read, um, because there is, let's say, give me, give me a skip. Yes, I should save it. So that's easier to read. So we, we could compare the output from yesterday um, where we had the decorator demo. There we created our, let's say, decorated objects ourselves. But in theory, we asked for a modern house in the end. Um, that should be the same as, let's say, the third output or the fourth output but with the first uh, third decoration from yesterday. So maybe run it, can I run it next to each other? Do I have both? Oh yes. So in theory, so that is basic and then three decorations, 3000 kilowatt hours and 3000 kilowatt hours. So it's the same thing is happening, but it's, it's way less code than, than what we do, did. So here it's basically this code is required to create the object the way we want, and the creation is in our client code. And if you go to the factory demo, this, or this one liner is doing the same. And the creation of the object is not here anymore, or objects in that case, because we are decorating. That is um, a little bit slimmer easier to maintain because you now have one central piece uh, or place where you can cr um, develop uh, your object creation. Um, that's what it's about. Mm. No, I hate it if PowerPoint jumps back. There are no classes with beautiful constructors. <laughs> no. That is, that is, that is basically at the end you you're building your API for the application that you're building. So if you 
I have some GUI that configures, uh, in this case, house features. Um, you will end up deciding one, one day, now I give these parameters to the factory to get um, the object that I need. This example is a little bit too simplified, let's say. And there's no real use case because there's no user doing anything. This is static code running through the runtime, the AVM runtime, and, and just doing what it, what it does. Usually you would have user interaction and then you do something with the, with the object. And maybe later on, so maybe you keep that object, especially in .NET GUIs, maybe you have your instance of the thing that you're showing somewhere, modify that and then um, uh, ask, ask for, let's say, an updated version from the same factory. But at the end, it depends on what you're doing. We had that discussion yesterday, when to use which pattern or why. Not all patterns fit everywhere. That's... Um, but they are not like like a um, mandatory thing at the end. No? And basic object orientation, which then ends up with constructors, is still a valid thing if you're doing such quick and dirty simple things that are not going to be used in many places, for instance. So that might be a criteria when to move that into a, something which is a factory or a builder. Uh, if you use that a lot of times in different places, just centralize your code. For first of all, pull it out of your GUI where it simply doesn't belong because that's more or less unmaintainable uh, or not reusable at least. Um, yeah, more than one, maybe two times. I don't know how many times is uh, already justification to move functionality into central place. Hardcore believers will tell you two is already good enough. Huh? Because you have two things to maintain, two things that can break, two things you need to fix them twice. Um, and that just multiplies to, to many, many, many more. So abstract factor usage, that's where we stopped. Okay. So builders. Thanks for not going to the slide where I wanted to. Builders, um, as, as the name says, uh, they build objects for you. And we also had basically we used builders in the, in the factory. And um, yeah, we had default house builder and modern house builder. But that's, that's not the way I want to show you builders. Um, classical builders, as we discussed actually before the talk started, is something that helps you building objects in a simpler way by separating out the parameterization. So there's, let's say, no, no real values you give to a constructor. No, there shouldn't be, actually. And um, you tell your builder basically what you want from him, and at the end you ask with build, give me that. That's, that's making things easier to read. So a constructor with just parameters given, um, you, you, by looking at it, you can't really understand what, what's going on. You have just a method, constructor is nothing more than a method, receiving parameters and um, just the position where they are tells what it is, tells the meaning. Here, the method name can be made meaningful. So at installation, at heat pump, at solar, that tells you I want a very specific thing at the end. And you can read it. That's the, the, the cool thing about it. <laughs> One thing about this kind of builders is they don't fit all use cases. So if you have objects that are not allowed to be changed after they are created, so immutable objects, that thing actually is illegal. And also, I discussed that with, I know it's in, he's in another talk, another guy in the, in the, in the break before this call. Um, even our simple house example here is already problematic. The implementation of the solar decorator in the change that it does in the behavior of the um, get energy consumption method, that is using a factor. So it's multiplying by 0 
seven fives. I think it's reducing by 25%. Um, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that's simply not the reality. You can't add solar and then have 25% less energy consumption. That is just valid for certain types of houses. So gas, heated houses, the solar does shit for reducing your energy consumption because you can't replace heat, uh, uh, gas with electricity unless you have electrical heating. So you would need the heat pump. And that example here, you could do add insulation, add solar, and you will get your 25% discount on your uh, heating bill, which is simply not correct. So this is actually the example I'm giving you is already shh, not good. <laughs> um, you need something which, which basically does it in one shot and then decides how do I change the behavior of the object that I give to you in a correct manner. So because here I could add and change things afterwards. And that's not, not right. If you look at this example here, uh, a fluent interface or a fluent builder, everything happens in chained manner, let's say. And at the end, you're asking for requests. So this is an HTTP client, uh, an HTTP request. And the, uh, the request builder, the request is the, let's say, getter for the instance that, you, that, you, that you're going to get. Um, or it's the factory method, actually. Um, that has everything in one shot. So this is one line of code right there. Here, it's four lines of code. So it's adding the things and then building. Here, it is um, uh, yeah, one line. You have this method is basically the builder method. This is the uh, parameters that you want to set, and this is then what you want from the builder. And the trick is that's how those fluent builders work: is you basically return yourself in any of those parameter or modification uh, methods. So uh, the interface defines a fluent house builder, and everyone, every, every of those methods always returns that. That's why you, you can chain them. Like, uh, this, this reads, if, if the first time you see that, it looks like broken, actually, a little bit, like you're, you're forgetting to separate the commands that you are giving to the builder. But that's actually uh, made that way. <laughs> and... Um, Especially the, 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 all those HTTP-related um, uh, builders. Uh, in, our, in doesn't matter if it's OpenEdge or other uh, technologies because they basically all copy-pasted uh, from, from one <laughs> each other. I'm not sure which one was the first who did that. But um, in, in the HTTP clients, I don't know, is someone tomorrow in the workshop for that? No? No, well, tomorrow is a workshop for HTTP client. Um, there, that's the only way to get an HTTP client uh, by going to such things because you can't instantiate them yourself, those uh, objects. Looking at our house example, so the, the simplest uh, approach is um, ask the fluent house builder to build a house. You can even read that again, that's, that's the nice thing about those things. Um, Hmm? Maybe, maybe I should even rename them. House builder built insulated. Yes, no. House, that makes it even nicer to read. And the same for those uh, other things. And um, it's just one line. And here in the, in the uh, build method, I could do the smart things. So, uh, like if I have an example where just insulation and solar, I would not allow the 25% cal calculation. I would have to do something else there. In our case, I don't think I have an implementation that I could return, actually. So, maybe I throw an exception like unsupported house configuration or whatever. 
but the smartness then is in the builder. And that can even avoid um, yeah, incorrect combinations. Could you also just leave everything to false by default and then remove all the trues uh, in your parameters, or is that not done? Here? Oh, oh, there. I mean, I don't need to call any of those methods. You can just leave them if away. You, if you say, I add installation, do you really have to give it a logical as a... No, you, you don't. No, 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 no. You can, if everything falls as default, then just go right. No, you, you don't need that. And I think the... Look at the, the um, uh, request builder here. That as methods, some have parameters, others don't. That depends on what makes sense there. It's just I made uh, this uh, example which uh, always has yes and, and no, and um, we, can, we can look at the class, um, what it does. Um, where is the Fluent House Builder? That's its name. Um, If you do your add heat pump, add insulation with a with, with parameter, it just stores that um, uh, in, a, in a variable and at the end um, uses that in the, in the build, not in the build, in the uh, factory method, which is a getter for that property, um, to decide how to then use the decoration process. I'm doing what I criticized yesterday on Peter's talks, that he overcomplicated patterns by combining them. I'm doing the same <laughs> <laughs> by combining um, the fluid builder with the decorator, which isn't necessary. So you could do a simpler example. But it, uh, that doesn't really change um, anything. The, the build of the actual thing or configuration of the actual object that, this will, that will be returned is in the builder. And uh, you get that uh, if you look at the samples in one shot. So the simplest thing is like that. I mean, that's not less than writing. I mean, huh? what, what's, what it's doing here is O-House. Why is it doing that? There is not no real advantage to that, huh? other than one compiles and the other not. <laughs> could not understand. Could not find a class interface basic class. Okay, because it's not in the includes and not not using. Oh, uh, who does that? No, there's there's no no code saving advantage. Let's say in in, in the simple way, but as soon as it's getting more complicated, it stays read it more readable. And uh, the constructor example, where is the constructor example? It's in the factory demo. The constructor example, um, no, no, no matter how I break those parameters, that is unreadable. No? I don't even know how I can get IntelliSense to tell me which parameter I am at right now. I'm in the third, third parameter, but what, what was is it? I know it's called parameter three. That's even not making it better. <laughs> and and lo look at, at code, especially wrote, written by juniors. Sometimes arguments and methods are just called argument whatever, variable three. I've seen that shit. And the, the less experience, the worse, unfortunately, um, in, in many cases. And there are better ways, like using some of those make me nice readable code patterns. Mm. Well, that's already caught. What the fuck is the right value for that variable? Mm. I mean, this is even worse than. Uh, where's the fluent demo? There. Then, then, then this. Mm. But this stays readable, no matter what you do. And also, in a constructor, the order where you place it is very, very important. <laughs> here, it doesn't matter if I have that here or there. It still will produce the same thing. 
Mm? So it's, it's even more error-proof for human developer errors. And they can happen. Software is written sometimes very late, very dark, and very quick. Classical builder, we had that. Fluent, we are there. Fluent interface. Yeah. So factories and builders, they are single responsibility classes. So all they do is create the right object for you. Um, so it's, it's good for code maintenance. You will end up with not having to write new again. Yes. <laughs> Three letter. Yeah, and it's, it simplifies creating objects because you can actually read what you're doing and don't have to think about which of the four constructs, uh, four, four would be easy, but which of the 15 constructors I have to use, which of the parameters I need in my use case right now, in which position are they, what data type are they, that's, that's way simpler, but things like that. Yeah, and as yesterday, we have a more complex example available on our GitHub page for GL Fanatics. There's the airplane seat patterns from uh, Peter Judge um, that's also doing decoration, that's doing factories, that's doing fluent builders. Uh, and in addition to that, it's even making the factory not hard-coded like the one I used, where I have basically a switch case from the um, type of house I want, and then the factory chooses which builder to use to get the house. There it's based on XML files that contain configuration, which then decide which loader is, um, or builder is the right one. Um, that is more like you do it in uh, in web frameworks, like, like we do in the Smart Component Library, where there needs to more flexibility in the deployment. So some people, when it comes to authentication or stuff like that, some do database authentication, some do Office 365, others do what, whatever you basically define then what the framework should do in a configuration file and um, not in code or, no, not or, in config, no? config instead of code. So, questions again, like yesterday, go to Peter Judge, who originally made that talk. Um, and today, I want to invite you also to uh, take our quiz. So, at our booth, we have a little iPad there where you can uh, enter 34 fancy questions about Open Edge and software development. And um, there's a chance for you to win. Um, some Amazon devices, Echo Studio, Echo Spot, Echo, Echo Without. What is the name of the Echo Without uh, edition? Basic Echo? But it's not the Basic Echo, it's the Echo Echo. Who knows? <laughs> 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 and yeah, and we will present on Friday who is the winner. So right now I can tell you uh, the, the same guy who's at the uh, White Star booth um, on, on first place. There's one who had 255 uh, points on the... Uh, Pong game is the first place in the quiz as well. That can't be true. Someone needs to beat him. <laughs> he can't win both. <laughs> yeah, other than that, thank you for your attention and the discussions in between.